Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Did you know that Britain's second most popular houseplant after the orchid is the amazingly colourful Kalanchoe? Available in almost every colour you could imagine, they're easy to grow, long blooming and easy to find in the shops. We've hooked up with the experts at Always Kalanchoe to bring you the first half of Series 5 of the Plant Based Podcast. You can find out more about these wonderful houseplants by following Always Kalanchoe on Instagram Let us know which colour you go for. Hey, Ellen, welcome to Series 5 proper, because we had a couple of kind of almost preview episodes where we talked to Bull Colgrave, we talked to Bull Horticultural, we looked at a lot of new plants that were coming through. And now we're kicking off Series 5 with our sponsor, which is Always Kalanchoe, who are the experts in Kalanchoe, which is a very, very popular houseplant. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. We'll also tell you a bit about our contributors. We'll also tell you about a few of the episodes that are coming up and what we've got in this episode. So, Ella Mary, I would like to invite you to get a word in Edgeways. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it seems Series 5 will be the same as Series 4, 3, 2, and 1. <laughs> oh, sure. You can talk when you want to, Mrs. Don't you worry. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Series 5, Mr. Plant Geek. It's a pleasure working with you again. Thank you. And we're in our transatlantic cocoons now because... Well, I'm in my rather, um, well, not that big a lounge in Suffolk. And you're in the cupboard again, dear, aren't you? <laughs> I am I keep coming out of the closet and then going back in it again. <laughs> I, this reminds me of our lockdown uh, Zooms that we used to do to record the podcast. Yeah. Stuck in America and you're in the UK and we're all locked down. We've actually moved apartments, so I'm in the closet. But it's actually a different closet to last oh, time. It's bigger. Or it's smaller. So oh, damn it. Hopefully that quality is even better because I'm literally surrounded by clothes. Um, but yeah, my clothes are actually everywhere. <laughs> it's a complete mess. So I'm pleased you can only see the door behind me. I like your light switch. I do like an American light switch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're very decisive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like you can really grab you know them. Like, no, but English light switches, you try and put them on in a hurry, your, your finger slides straight to the side, but an American one, you can't help but switch it, you know? That's, that's very true. It's very true. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, I, I am honestly genuinely very incredibly excited about Series 5. We have got some epic episodes coming up, haven't we? Episodes. Episodes. <laughs> That's awesome. We can only rely on really you for amazing. the word twists going on. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I was I was looking at the episodes the other day, Ellen Mary, because, you know, I've been in the spreadsheet muddling everything up as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw, what have we got coming up? We've got Helmingham Hall. We've got Arthritis Foodie. We've got a uh, lovely lady, Amber, who wrote a book about plant hunters, that which I do read at night time. You know, I've really got into reading plant books at night time. Should I not be reading Mills and Boone at this age or something? I I, but I don't, oh Mills and Boone get you. Instead I, of talking about the intricacies of botany at the well at the level of my understanding. So honestly, Michael, you are a true plant geek. I've spent years yeah. only reading books about plants, and this year I decided that before I go to bed, I'm going to read something completely different. I'm going to let you in on something that occurred to me this summer. What? When I was out and about with friends, uh, meeting people, doing stuff, socialising, basically, um, I realized that when I was engaging in a conversation that was anything other than plants, mm. I really didn't know what to say. I oh, because you were two-dimensional, you realized. all about plants. And I, if someone asked me about plants or gardening, I was like, yeah, da 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 And then as soon as it turned to something else, I was kind of like, mute. 
again, you're on a mission to make yourself more interesting. I'm on a mission to actually understand the world outside of botany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Honestly, so my I read the what? What's what are you starting I read about with? plants all of the time, like all day. It's yeah. all, all the work as plants, <laughs> writing as plants, everything as plants. So basically I decided that when I read before I go to sleep at night, I'm gonna read a book about something else anything else it might just be a romantic comedy or it might be yeah. the history of america it doesn't matter it just needs to be something that's not plants how about so what that have you started on i've just started a book called 1451 i hope i've just got the title right um and it's about what happened before america was uh, colonized uh-huh oh that's pretty cool oh yeah. wow there well i guess yeah i don't just read about plants i read cookery books as well <laughs> but the story is always hard to follow <laughs> and it always ends up in the pan <laughs> boom, boom. Oh, dear. anyway yeah. Ellen uh so they're coming up what else is coming up we've got some nice contributors as well right yeah we are always so lucky to work with amazing contributors and for series five we've got a little splash of something different which again I really really love we've got uh DIY haven't we DIY Outdoor, yeah uh, DIY, Outdoor DIY, how DIY. to um, make, make sure your patio tables don't go gunky. <laughs> They're great tips, you know, so that's really yeah. cool. We've got August Garden, the colourful kitchen garden grower, who also yeah. works at Le Manoir. How very I know, she was at Chelsea. We narrowly, na- narrowly, narrow. I've never said that word out loud before. <laughs> we almost, we pretty much missed each other, yeah. Oh, she's We've also got Nat on the nursery, haven't we? Nat on the nursery, talking about <laughs> what happens behind the scenes in nurseries. She's yeah. a group. Well, she works with young horts as well, does a lot yeah. for young horticultural. And probably our favourite of all, One Minute Gardener. <laughs> One Minute Gardener, little Teddy. He's only just a few years old, but his dad, Derek, the Five Minute Gardener, has him down in the garden growing his own food. <laughs> and it's just really good fun and great to see such a young person being out there in the garden and enjoying, you know, plants. He's the future. <laughs> So, yeah, awesome contributor to this series as well. Super so exciting. Cool. Oh, I can't wait, really. It's really, it's slowly become a real lovely magazine podcast. And I'm really proud of it. And we I'm should so definitely cool. win an award at the Garden Media Guild Award. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we never do. <laughs> <laughs> I had a missed call from, um, what's uh, Lucy this week about the awards, she said, but she didn't tell me what about the awards. And I'm hoping that she's calling me to say she can fix a few things for us. Oh, I can tell you what it is. I've had <laughs> oh, that. Oh, no, call. what? Well, I don't know if I'm meant to tell you. On uh, the oh, well, don't, tell me, don't tell me on the recording, Ellen. <laughs> okay, I will tell you after the recording. What tell me out of the cupboard. <laughs> 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 anyway, Ellen, this is not technically a gossip. So I'll hand it over to you now to intro what this episode is all about because we're doing something that's quite unique really and something that people out there don't get round to doing very often so what is that Ella Mary? Gardening? <laughs> no oh my I set you up really nicely there you've ruined everything oh I'll give you a clue do you do you know or are you just messing around? <laughs> no I'm just no I don't know oh I'm furious with you are what, you? What, what, what is this episode about? Do you not read the spreadsheet? But this episode is all about... Uh... <laughs> oh, I'm trying to give her hand motions now. Are you, have you still got jet lag? <laughs> I can't stop laughing. So your problem is you don't drink coffee. That's your problem. <laughs> if I drank coffee, imagine what, what I would be like. Yeah, you might get something done. <laughs> like, honestly, I completely don't know what it would be like. Anyway... Um, I think I know what it is, Michael. Yeah, because you're frantically looking at the spreadsheet because you're so I think I know what it is. Could you tell us frantically looking at the spreadsheet? Um, I need to tell you about my plant hunting in North Carolina. <laughs> but we're in the middle of an episode. <laughs> oh, oh, but I thought that was the episode that's coming out now. Oh, my God, you make me so cross. Right, tell us very quickly about your plant hunting and then I will intro the rest of the episode since you've forgotten the whole essence of it. Right, Honestly, on, I really thought that this links. Is this not plant hunting? Oh, does it? Oh, well, if it does, do it. Do it. Go it on. is plant hunting. That's my point. Oh, my gosh. I caught up eventually. Yes, I am going plant hunting in Wilmington in North Carolina, where 
you can find native carnivorous plants. It's the only place in the whole world. So this means I am officially a plant hunter. And hopefully yeah. that links in to what this episode is about. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> this is about plant hunting. No, it's not. <laughs> it's about killed farm. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast News. Your horticultural news roundup for the week. ITV Morning Program this morning have bought their own forest. It's all part of a drive to go green and stop the woodland from ever being built on. They will be adding further trees in due course, and they've just made their first broadcast from the forest. Alison Hammond has been hugging trees and James Martin has been doing some woodland cookery. So I can't wait to see what else they're going to do there in the woodland. U.S. officials have reported more than 20 new animal and plant extinctions. Along with the ivory-billed woodpecker and yellow-breasted songbird, one plant, a philostegia, a perennial herb in the mint family, which was native to Hawaii, is now gone forever. Scientists do not declare extinctions lightly. Is this another wake-up call? In slightly better news, the world's oldest tropical rainforest has been returned to its original Aboriginal custodians. This is quite a historic deal. The UNESCO site will now be managed by the Kuku Yilangi people in partnership with the Queensland government. And this next piece of news makes my heart sing. One in eight young people think gardening is cool. And more than half would rather go to a garden centre than a nightclub. A poll of 2,000 people found horticulture has enjoyed a renaissance among 18 to 13-year-olds during lockdown. As a result, 83% now describe gardening as cool and 54% would rather amble around a garden centre than dance a night away in a club. That is unbelievable. I love it. I (laughs) I told everybody when I was younger that it would be cool. (laughs) So also another plant that's getting those retro vibes is chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums went down a storm at the recent autumn Chelsea Flowers Show with Chrysanthemums Direct leading the way. They had a vibrant display of voluptuous blooms that included those very traditional swimming hat chrysanthemums, the lovely incurved. Mm, I love them. Will they rival dahlias? New research has found that the electrical charge created by visiting bumblebees stimulates some flowers to release more of their sweet-smelling scent. This is the first time a plant has been shown to use the presence of pollinators as a cue to emit more of its attractive perfume, increasing its chances of being visited. A tiny electrical charge carried by bees is thought to help pollen stick to them during flight. But the team of researchers from the University of Bristol, Rothamsted Research and Cardiff University found that it can also announce their presence to the flowers they visit. Hi, I'm here. Pollinate me. This is so exciting. Going back to one of the items that we spoke about in the news this week, where one in eight young people think gardening is cool. Well, we have found one of those eight young people, plus another as well. We have been speaking to two apprentices two apprentices at Kiln Farm Nursery. And we've, of course, also had Ruth from Kiln Farm on this podcast before. We've been chatting to Josh at Kiln Farm Nursery all about how much he loves plants. And we were genuinely so, so pleased to talk with him. He's full of enthusiasm and he just, well, loves plants. And so, you know, here's the episode. We want to encourage more people into horticulture. It never ceases to make me feel 
extremely warm inside when you meet young people who are genuinely passionate about plants i have a feeling that josh is going to be the next mr plant geek so watch (laughs) out michael um and we also spoke to jordan briefly as well so well done ruth at kiln farm for taking on your two amazing apprentices and uh well done josh thank you so much for coming on the podcast and chatting with us and we hope everyone enjoys it absolutely i remember josh is only on the podcast because he walked up to me at kiln farm one day and said can I come on your podcast? (laughs) Which I really love that initiative. So here you are, you are on the podcast and you're one of our most interesting interviews we've ever done. And I'm really pleased that, you know, rather than just talking about getting young people into gardening, we're actually going out there and talking to them. So here we go. Okay, for our little special gossip snippet, as it were, this week, we're at Kiln Farm Nursery in Ipswich, Suffolk, which is my hometown, as many of you know. (laughs) And we're actually here with Josh, who's an apprentice at Kiln Farm, and he's young. Hi, Josh. How old are you? 19. 19. Now, no. I'm here with Josh and he's young. But this is really (laughs) exciting for me because we talk about getting young people into horticulture all the time and kind of into the industry, but we don't ever talk to young people. And so today, that's why I'm really excited to talk to a young person about their actual experiences of coming into horticulture. I do completely agree with Mm, you. There's two things I'd like to say. First of all, it's sunny, and that's amazing. And secondly, (laughs) I I notice that when us older people talk about younger people, it's like we're so separate. Do you know what I mean? It's like these young people over here are these old people over here. And that needs to stop, yeah. And it's not. Like, we're just all people. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? I, I hate it when like we say you know of oh, the younger generation mm. like there's some alien group of people and how to get them it's into like, horticulture let's just ask them you know <laughs> just let's like, not just keep guessing yeah stop talking about it and saying what do we do all well, these people over there yeah. actually just chat like you I know, know. So that is why you're here today, but you're also here today because you actually asked to come on the podcast. I was at Kiln Farm one day and he sidled up to me, he just said, hi, oh, I recognise you off Instagram, etc, etc. He said, can I come on the podcast? And I was like, yeah, because this is so cool. I love people that just ask to do stuff. They just go, because what is the worst that could happen? We say no, you just move on, you ask someone else something. So Mm. I just love that confidence that you were like, I want to come on the podcast. So that is why you're here today, really, (laughs) because you demanded it. And there's a dog here too. Hello, hello doggy. I've got white clothes on and the dog has black I told you that'd be a mistake. So yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay, anyway, (laughs) thanks so much for being here on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Like, how did you get into horticulture? Like, where did it start? Mm. Yeah, so obviously I left school, didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, In school they always, you know, post-16, it was either sixth form or college course. And apprenticeships were always talked about, but they were always like getting a job. So if you got one, you were quite lucky. Mm -hmm. So I tried, but obviously wasn't successful. So I went to college, didn't really know what I wanted to do. So followed my interest, which was sport at the time. Mm -hmm. I always liked gardening. You know, I used to do it with, with my mum in the garden and things, but I always thought it was more of a hobby than a job. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, mm. didn't sort of... Is that because your parents said that, or you just assumed because that's how no, everybody treated it? I just assumed, because yeah. I always thought it was quite fun. Okay. And I didn't know many people that worked in yeah, yeah. culture. Uh-huh. So I thought, oh, I can't, you know, treat this mm-hmm. as a job. This, yeah. is, this is a hobby. Yeah. Can so, I also ask at that point, because kind of we're going along chronologically, like, that you were gardening at that age, were you embarrassed in front of your friends or was it because like when I was young I was kind of embarrassed to be into plants you know it wasn't the cool thing to do no I, can no? S- I suppose not I mean if you could build things that was more cool than okay, doing yeah. that and yeah but I think no I really enjoyed it and you yeah. know most of it for me pocket money you know cut the grass and, mm-hmm. and things like that but yeah I always thought of it more as a hobby mm, than a okay. job it's mm-hmm. interesting actually that because I think it's that's a failure in the horticulture industry actually mm. because it if people st- still now believe that gardening is a hobby, <clears throat> there's something wrong somewhere. Because the yeah. horticulture industry is mm-hmm. massive. Like, the um, input into the economy is mil- multi-millions yeah. every year. And yeah. um, there's so many, like, varied careers within horticulture. And I think both at school and perhaps 
um, parents and whatnot don't understand mm-hmm. how amazing horticulture is but that's as a career. The horticulture industry, but also like the education industry well, the as well. Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that that's, but schools as well should be recognising horticulture yeah. as a good industry. But to that has into, to be yeah. led by the horticulture yeah, industry true, at true. the end of the day. But yeah, yeah. anyway. Mm-hmm. So there you are enjoying what you thought was only a hobby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at college, I thought, okay, I like sport as well. So. I'm, I'm quite into my football, so I thought I'll go down that route. But uh-huh. it, it was much more theory than practical, so uh-huh. I didn't really like that. So I was not really on a path anywhere. Then I um, started a, a traineeship at Ipswich Town, at the uh-huh. training ground, doing grounds work. And then I was like, oh, there's, there's much more to this than I thought. And then I was obviously looking for an apprenticeship, um, and luckily I found Paul and Roof and here we are at current day, really. That kiln farm. And, and it all started from one phone call. I love that. You just made a call. Yeah, so I thought, well, what's the worst going to happen? Like you said earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they say no, I just pretend it never happened. Mm -hmm. And then Paul said, well, come down, bring your CV, and we'll have a chat. And I met Ruth, and I remember it was a hot, hot September's day. Yeah. Uh, um, Like today. Yeah, like today. And yeah, it it went from there. I was invited back for a formal interview and then a trial, and Mm -hmm. then I was offered, offered an apprenticeship, and... Here we are. So, yeah, sorry, let me just. Um, so, you were doing the sports course and then you started an apprenticeship at. Traineeship at Ipswich Town, yeah. Okay, and then at what point, how, when did you then change your mind? You just kind of dropped out of that apprenticeship? Yeah, so they, they were going to offer me an apprenticeship. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. However, I thought I wasn't 100% set okay. and uh-huh. on it. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't sure, you know, progression routes and, and things like that. And then obviously, I really enjoyed plants and gardening. And I was uh-huh. like, well, there must be something like a job that you can do this. And then obviously, <laughs> but that's such a. And there change. Is. It must have been in the back of your mind because yeah, that's quite. A, that's quite a change. Swapping yeah. football for flowers. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, we're happy about it in yeah. the horticultural industry. But that's a big. Yeah, I mean, it was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. Part. Because actually, like, we really want to dig into this, but like, because you probably could have earned more money doing football. Maybe. But it's not about the money, is it? No, it's not. So what did you think along those lines? Yeah. So I always wanted to do plants but like I said yeah. earlier I thought it was just a hobby so I always had it in the back of my mind but never let myself get excited by it mm-hmm. because I was like it's just a hobby mm. you know um, but yeah I, I enjoyed doing the groundsman side of things mm-hmm. but plants was really where I sort of wanted to be mm-hmm. but isn't the amount of money you make dependent on what you make of your job well it is but I think a lot a lot of people wouldn't see it that way would they mm. you know well just yeah. did yeah, yeah definitely. Well, I suppose so. I so think it's important yeah. when you're doing something that you're really passionate about, you can make of it what you want to make of it. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like you can mm. make great things happen because you're just passionate. But I think about society it. generally makes you think that you have to earn more and more money to be happy. I think yeah. that is still not quite. That's capitalism. Yeah, let's not go there on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so why Kiln Farm? Did you not ring a few more nurseries? Or yeah, I knew about Kiln Farm. Yeah, um, because. Obviously, Ipswich is literally over there, isn't mm-hmm. it? So I used to ride past, and I was like, oh, it looks like a nice nursery. Mm-hmm. Um, but I obviously, you know, spoke to a few more, but this felt like mm-hmm. the right the right choice. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely the right choice. Okay. I think the way That's they cool. do things here, it's much yeah. like a family feel. Had you visited nice. before? Like, uh, I've casually. been here yeah. a few times, yeah. Oh, okay. A few times as a customer, but yeah, never. Pick out his plants, like yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> you know. uh, tell us about your apprenticeship then. What does it involve? What do you have to do? Yeah, so it's called oh, it's called something long horticultural landscape operative. I think, but I might oh. be wrong. Okay. Uh-huh. I might be wrong. That sounds super posh. It does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they give it a long name to make it sound posh, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's all about plant identification, uh, plant maintenance. Um, like soil science, it's, there's loads to it. Loads to it. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Similar to what I did actually. Is there anything on it that you don't like or anything on it that you don't think is relevant? No, not so far, no. Okay. Obviously, I'm only mm-hmm. a year in of a two year mm-hmm. apprenticeship, so I'm only halfway through. Mm-hmm. But yeah, not, not so far. I don't think there's anything I think, mm, I'm not quite sure about this. So, uh-huh. no. And how many days? So, how many days are you, say, at the college as opposed to being here? Yeah, so how does that all um, work? Five days a week here, yeah. uh, Tuesday to Saturday. Um, and what it is, is you used to have day release where you used to go to college for a day. Mm-hmm. But with COVID and everything, the tutor now comes to you. Mm-hmm. Ah. So you get set work, you get allocated time during the working week to do your work. Mm-hmm. And then they come and sort of review your work, uh, teach you stuff. So last couple of weeks we've been out on the 
fields on the farm doing mowing and mm -hmm. we've done pest diseases and things yeah. so that's yeah really cool, you sort of yeah. do it in the workplace so yeah. Yeah. that's really cool like you yeah. can't be i don't think like practical training actually being surrounded by everything mm. do you know what i mean like the theory is great i done my rhs certificates theory and like you're reading books do you know what i mean all of the mm. time and that's great but nothing beats actually being with yeah you gotta learn from doing dirty, yeah definitely you know? that's definitely the best mm. way so what's going to be next for you after the apprenticeship? Do you have any idea? Well, obviously, I'm hoping I'll mm -hmm. be able to stay here. Mm -hmm. I mean, Should if... we have a word with Ruth? <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, that's what I'm hoping. I mean, unless I'm told otherwise, uh, I mean, yeah, my, yeah. my plans are definitely here and building on what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Paul and Ruth gave me the chance to... To, be, yeah. to make myself something in horticulture. That's brilliant. So yeah. I feel like you should never forget where your roots are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah That's a garden part, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if I can stay here and, and build off what I've already got, then mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's the number one aim. Wow, that's really cool. But like, what would you then, like, what do you see like in the future, like even beyond that, like you would want to move into a certain area, like running a nursery or kind of, you know, because like you probably seen with what we do and kind of what we're linked to, there's so many different options in horticulture that are yeah. not necessarily always practical as well. Yeah. So there's so much out there. Is there anything that's taking your fancy out there? Um, so far, obviously, I'm just sort of focusing on learning the trade. Mm -hmm. But I think I quite like what Ruth does, obviously, with the mm. writing and the garden mm. media stuff. That's quite okay. cool. But I also like what Paul does which is yeah. like the firewood and the general mm. running so you're seeing nursery. both worlds yeah. there that's really yeah. cool you can mix the two for yeah, sure yeah, you yeah, can be yeah, doing definitely. all the practical stuff <coughs> and the same kind of writing of... and shining yeah. the writing uh, uh -huh. yeah. so many options so. and that's I think cool. what's uh, what's really unique about Kiln Farm there are there's quite a few younger people on the staff there is yeah and that is quite refreshing because often you'll go somewhere and they'll be kind of generally an older older staff but how do you find that? Did that surprise you that you'd be surrounded by young people just like yourself? Um, a little bit, yeah, yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah, I thought it would be a lot older people. Yeah. But obviously you've got another apprentice who's the same age as me. Mm -hmm. You've got Chris, he's 25. He's massively knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. You know, I rely on him quite a lot, you know, always asking him questions and he's always happy to help. <laughs> mm. You know, and then you've got Salvo, who's a little bit older than that. Uh, say a little bit older, I think he's in his 40s, but, mm -hmm. you know. Um, old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100% sure of his age, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, and then obviously Paul and Ruth and you yeah. the ladies in the shop as well, I must not forget them, everyone uh -huh. else. It's role. such a nice little family team here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Seems like, like it's always a good vibe, you know, it's a good energy, I always think. It'd be a better vibe if it had a coffee shop, just saying. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't here when the coffee shop was here, but everyone speaks so highly of it. Mm. Um, I mean, the, the man that used to run the coffee shop has his own coffee van now. Oh, right, okay, yeah, so, so it's mobile now. It's mobile now, so yeah, you can still get the uh -huh. fix, but just have to follow him around wherever he goes. <laughs> so, yeah. um, what questions I don't know about you, Ellen? Yeah. But what? Well, um, firstly, your friends. What do yeah. your friends think of your job? Do they know what um, you do? What, are they kind of like, oh, you're yeah, just messing around with plants, or do they see it as a viable career option? That interests yeah, me think a lot. I've always had like quite supportive friends, so yeah. Mm. I mean, I sort of explain to them it's more landscaping because obviously horticulture is quite an alien word. I mean, yeah. I never really yeah, knew much yeah. about it. Um, so yeah, it's more like the What if you said the word gardening? That doesn't gardening, really yeah. sum it up either though, does it? Or Sort of, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's more like you're prepping plants to go in the garden. Mm. Like, you know, but then True. obviously you can do garden jobs as well. So it's very like generic, I think. But you, you find it hard to describe what you do. Imagine describing what we do. Yeah, what are you <laughs> Nobody can ever get, their, no get their head around what that. Yeah. Say. And <laughs> in that, um, there was a, a news article recently about container planting, and it said garden influencer Ellen Mary. Oh, right, yeah. And then um, did I, you like that or not? No, I was a bit like I don't really but know. But why is influencer a dirty word? Because a lot of people yeah. think influencers are like the uh, Kardashians, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But what what <laughs> does like... Josh, as a young person, what, what do you think when you hear the word influencer? Because we always assume, like, you yeah. know, influencers, I we don't want to speak for you. Influencers is, 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 is a big sort of word, but it, it's could, like, your influencers. In my do you see opinion. it as a positive word? Yeah, I see, like, your influencers. Isn't that strange? Because we see it as a negative word. We see it as kind of like, you, like you said, the Kardashian, <laughs> trashy... I never thought of it as negative yeah. until yeah. I'd done a piece on the BBC years ago and mm -hmm. I got absolutely <clears throat> caned for 
calling myself a garden influencer. Really? Yeah. I would say, if, if someone asked me to describe you, I'd say you're both garden influencers. All right, well, it oh, comes no. from you, and we want you young people <laughs> yeah. in I mean, the I've, industry, I've, so I've I'll go on with Instagram, it. I've you obviously you're helpful sometimes, uh, well, most yeah. of the time. Um, with, with everything. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Mm. Well, I'm taking it from you, Josh. But that's, yeah. it's just interesting because like we, we have so many assumptions and that's why it's great to actually talk to someone younger and see what the differences are. Mm. And what do you think are the barriers for other young people moving into horticulture? Why do you think people um, wouldn't choose it and what could be changed? I think because people don't know much about it. You know, if I knew more about it when I was at school, I think I would have come straight into it rather yeah. than trying different options and then ending up here. Uh-huh. You know, because I didn't plan on doing it. Like I said, I thought of it more as a hobby. Mm. And then when I found out that there's career opportunities, obviously yeah. I wanted to pursue it. Yeah. Is it that's, that is interesting because um, even when I was at school, um, horticulture wasn't a thing. Mm. It was generally uh, the people who got sent to a uh, local college, which was Eastern, to do the horticulture courses were those whose grades weren't that good. Mm. And that was mm-hmm. it. And it was literally like an end of the road kind of career. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I always remember saying, you know, I love plants. I, you know, I'd like to work in plants. And it wasn't even an option. And it kind yeah, of seems like that hasn't that changed in all those way. years. Like, to work in horticulture, you have to know your English, know your maths, do physics, do chemistry, know mm. biology, do ge- geography, history, art. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you literally need, like, everything. You need to be all of those things in order to work in horticulture, mm. gardening, plants, whatever you want to call it. Because that's what it entails, you know? But it seems like it hasn't changed mm. over all of those years. It still isn't regarded as a really important, really cool, and really respect and should be a really respected mm. industry. No, no, it's, it's really interesting that you see, you see it as not being that accessible and not that visible. Like, didn't is, actually know. It means that on our side of the table, we've still got more work to do. With that. More influencing yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's I do think it will change I because so. people mm. are so much more aware of, like, the environment and sustainability and, like, climate change. And we know how important, now, don't we, it mm. is to, like, mm. garden for um, <clears throat> pollinators and wildlife and you know, farming and landscapes and everything, just how important that is for Mm. our planet's future. And that's being taught in schools. So surely gardening and horticulture goes hand in hand with that, you know? Mm. And I think it's become a bit seen as a bit more cool, you know? And so I do think it is changing, but the link has to be between (coughs) industry and education. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So that people at school can learn that actually, Uh, you know, it's a a really great career. But then that's like, that's great. It's like seeing being seen as cool, but then probably on our side of the table here we'd be like oh we're almost like we don't want too many people to know about it or we don't want too many people to then give advice out about it because then we want to protect the knowledge we have so i think sometimes horticulture can be its own worst enemy because we kind of want to share stuff but not too much because we want to kind of share it correctly and make sure the right skills are passed down so i think the key there was yeah. correctly sharing mm. like the more sharing the better mm. as long as it's correct information yeah do you know what i mean like i think that if every single person in this whole country and world gardened and shared how they gardened, that would be, mm. I nearly swore then, epic, right? Yeah. But the information sharing has to be correct, and mm. that's, the, that's the key. Do you know what I mean to what you were saying? But correct that? as per RHS or correct as per their own experience. There's a difference, isn't there? Yeah, there yeah. is, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, I just want to ask, how many on your course, how many students? Um, just I... comparing to my days. I don't actually know because we're all of Oh, because you're all remote. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, I just so, wondered, yeah. I know, I mean, obviously, Jaden, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, he's here as well. He's doing. Oh, so you're never stuff. in an actual class environment like that? We did once when we went to do our spray, uh, PA1. Yeah. I don't know if you know oh, okay. uh, The pesticide. The pesticide thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We went there um, to Otley. Well, yeah. It's called Suffolk Rural now, I think. Okay. They've yeah. merged with Suffolk New. Um, and there was about. 20, I think, 20 mm-hmm. apprentices. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, what are you taught about pesticides now? Is it? Oh, loads. Really? Safe yeah. handling, all sorts. I never yeah. did that. And kind yeah. of like, should they teach you to use pesticides? Uh, yeah. Should you even be big I guess commercially, anymore? isn't it? Like, there is a commercial world. Yeah. And maybe ah! until there's a viable option. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I had another question about like social media. Mm-hmm. 
what do you how do you see social media what do you learn from it you know that has helped you with making career decisions or not or what, yeah, how so, do you see it because we see it obviously in a very different way and like many people our age we do see it as a kind of like a guilty pleasure almost oh, but right. like, stop do you... saying that <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to cry but do you see it as something that helps you or something that you feel like obliged to do or this or just be really interested to know what yeah, you think so of social when media when I moved into this industry obviously mm. I noticed um, Ruth did a podcast with you before yeah. so I knew about you two obviously from, from that so obviously you were quite big on Instagram mm-hmm. and you were like 35,000 followers you've got 25,000 yeah. so you're, you're big yeah. you know um, Mike the Gardener as well he popped down oh yeah of course yeah, yeah. 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 we've been on his podcast yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got obviously a, a large following and you know obviously what you post about is helpful to people I mean, mm-hmm. that's your target audience, isn't mm. it? People mm. that are doing gardening. I think mm-hmm. lockdown's proved, you know, yeah. how many people yeah, yeah, it's yeah. have taken gardening up. Yeah. You know? That's really interesting. What like what platform would you look at primarily? Instagram when we're when we're talking about that. Yeah, I'd say yeah. Instagram, but I mean Facebook as well. Obviously Ruth's got her mm. her Facebook page that she does. Mm-hmm. So I think there's plenty of options mm. depending on what okay. you prefer to use. It's really interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Just yeah. so you know, the, the sloshing of water in the background with someone washing their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Making a fresh cup of Making tea. Making a fresh cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Ah, no worries. <laughs> I just didn't want anyone to think that Michael was taking the lead in the corner. Or oh, any more questions? I feel like we should ask so much while we're here. Yeah, I'd love to know. we don't often get this opportunity. I'd love to know what you think uh, the future of horticulture might be. Like, mm. where do you think it's going to go? What, or what would you love to see happen? I think more people wanting to work in horticulture mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you know like you see some young people come down you know there was a young lad a few weeks ago on a saturday i think he was about 15 mm-hmm. and he wanted to create an area of the garden and i was like this is this yeah, is the next cool. this is generation cool. yeah so i'd like to see more people like when they you know when they go to school say oh i want to work with plants yeah yeah, yeah. i wonder if um you probably won't have ever seen the difference but in my time i see a lot of younger people in garden centers now and nurseries you know yeah. buying yeah. plants and you know mostly like hovering around the house plants for example but also you know further afield than that like like this 15 year old who was yeah, I, I mean, really I don't cool. know if he was 15. I mean, he looked like uh, 15, but yeah, he was really interested and in asked me a few questions and uh, Chris a few questions. And I think he wanted to make like a wild area in the garden mm-hmm. with some bulbs and some wow, perennials. That's really cool. Yeah, which I've never had before. Yeah. Yeah. He must have been so excited. Yeah, I would have been. Like, yeah. It's, and if he's not... looking for like, you know, wild bulbs and kind of that sort of vibe, he's probably come from an environmental angle, yeah. which is interesting yeah. as well. And yeah. I do think yeah. that's going to be so much bigger going mm. forward like the environmental side and also plant based eating as well you know like growing your own food and just mm. having more plants in your life in general I think is going to really kind of push forward over the mm-hmm. next few years definitely plant based stuff yeah because yeah. yeah. how, how long ago were you at school then it must be two or three years right uh, I left school in 2018 Okay, so did they start to teach you stuff about the environment at that stage? Or? Obviously, there was all this about climate change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Just wondered how that not much played about out. how we could change it. Yeah, you know? I yeah, guess to be fair, that was a few years, but, but now the solution. Like, solutions. Yeah. Yeah. But, but now are... might be different. I think we are. Maybe, but, but I years, actually think it? that certain generations. I don't want to say old and young again. Are, are kind of like putting the information out there, like. This is climate change. This Tantalizing is people with it, yeah. But then they're yeah. expecting the younger generation to come up with the solutions. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because yeah. they don't. Like, there are solutions out there, but they're not implementing them. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of yeah, like passing true. it on down to you, which is kind of really. Mm. I mean, it's amazing but because like, you're key to it. But also, there are solutions that you, they need to discuss with you too. But I'd almost take that further and say they're dramatising it and not giving a solution to it. Do you know what I mean? What do you mean dramatising like, it? No, like when the media is then talking about it and that. And is they then, tell you all about yeah. it, and then no one yeah, actually yeah. says. But you can mm. actually resolve it by doing yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Or mm. this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But like so the thing yeah. that we all look at, the media it doesn't ever offer those solutions either. You know? Yeah, but I'm going to be mm. really harsh now. The UK mm. media is absolutely yeah. shocking. Oh, that. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for all, all yeah. kinds of many things. And we work in the media. It's just like, all drama. Was it all drama, no trousers? That's not a phrase, is it? What's the phrase? All... <laughs> There is a phrase to do with that. How bad are we? I don't know. All drama, no action. I don't know. No. But yeah, anyway, that's a whole other podcast as well. But I mean, plants, <laughs> you come across them all the time. You know, yeah. Even if you're not into them, you probably use something. Yeah. That's to do with oh, yeah. yeah. You know, candles at home, lavender scented. Yeah. yeah. It's a plant. 
you know? Yeah. Like all. cosmetics, clothes. Yeah, clothes, mm. you know. Where do people think their cotton t-shirts come from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. We wouldn't be sitting at this table in this room on a chair if it wasn't for plum. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. Well go yeah. You know, these skin products you use, most of them have something like aloe vera. Yeah. Plum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely. know, everything is Yeah, plants. totally. Mm. We, like, we wouldn't be alive if there wasn't plum. No. Like, we wouldn't be here as humans. Mm. So it's so essential. Plants oh. are underrated. That's what it's, I think. There we go. Plants are underrated. Yay, there we go. Says, and he's a young person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Josh, uh, you're on Instagram, aren't you? Yes. And what is your tag on Insta? I don't post much garden stuff on Insta. Oh, oh. yeah. So people tune in when it be all football. Yeah, you to it's, it's more. That. Yeah, I'll I'll have to start being like the yeah. young. Mr. Punk, do that. <laughs> do yeah, that. I think I'll have to. I have yeah, to because give him a run for his money. Yeah. Yeah. It might be generally that, like you know, other people your age might not look to older influencers. They might be wanting to see people in the same position as they're in. Yeah, and maybe. so some of your responsibility potentially is to show how it's done. Could be at that thought, young age. Yeah, yeah. Thought, definitely. Yeah. So I think that would be really perfect. So if you need to see you on Instagram. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll completely have an Instagram revamp. Josh the Planter. Josh yeah. the Planter. Plan- it's yeah. like you're a pop. <laughs> <laughs> you're a pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh the Pop. That could be anything. <laughs> Josh the Gardener, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, I think you should do it. That would be amazing. And then I'll send it across. And yeah. Cool, yeah. Definitely. yeah definitely. Get definitely. Get on him. <laughs> like, you've got a whole nursery of plants here that you can talk about. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That would be really cool. You do some really cool reels. Like, you've got the perfect setting for it. I have. I mean, know? Ruth is the the queen here mm. when it comes to social media. She's, she's also, she's she's also very open. She's Ruth not, is the queen. Yeah. Ruth is the queen when it comes to social media. So yeah. if I can be anywhere near as good at her with, with <clears> posting <throat> plants. Yeah, for sure. Then uh, I've got someone good to learn off. Absolutely. She's uh-huh. amazing. I'm so I pleased. I think we'll have a word with her. Yeah. We'll have a word. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a word with her. Cool. I'd love to put you in touch with some people as well in the industry that I think that you'd be interested mm. in chatting to as well. Yeah, yeah. That's you know? really cool. But I think you definitely need your social media account. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that's missing, I think. Have you yeah. been to the flower show yet? No, that's another thing oh, on the list. Yeah, the flower show and a, and a proper social media account. That's the what two, you need, yeah. what would be goals. really cool, and perhaps we should have this at our age as well. This is a really cool idea, Ellen. Stop Wait for it. Stop our age. <laughs> oh my God. We yeah. should all make a horticultural bucket list. Of things mm. we want to achieve within, <laughs> not just career-wise, but personally, kind of like, I really want to see a mechanopsis in real life, you know, something like that. Even, <laughs> even silly God. things. I think that would be a pretty in, interesting thing to do. Not just yeah. for us here today, but for the listeners as well. Yeah. Your horticultural bucket list. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 And what mine would... Horticultural compost honestly, bin list. <laughs> I honestly think that mine would have mechanopsis on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen them at Harlow Car. They're amazing. I actually germinated yeah. some from seed tiny little plants planted really? them out and died oh yeah I thought so <laughs> anyway. do you drive yeah. Ah, so yeah. you could get out to gardens like RHS Gardens. Yeah, yeah, that's like that. definitely yeah. my plan. Yeah, we yeah, definitely. Hide yeah. Hall. Yeah. Hide Hall, yeah. just down the road. Or even on your own. You know, yeah. I think the best skill of all is to realise that you can go to places on your own. Yeah, not, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Like some people are very scared to do that. You know, but like I we. I prefer going on my yeah. own. Yeah. You're all right, but otherwise on my own. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm there, you ignore me, so it's like you're on on your own anyway. <laughs> but yeah, definitely do that. Sort out that yeah. horticultural bucket list. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. will as well. Yeah. Thanks so much, Josh. Yeah, no, thank, thank you, you very much. Me. Cheers. I really cool. appreciate it. No props. Thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Series 5 is supported by the team at Always Cal and Choey, the experts when it comes to this super cool houseplant. Why not visit www.calandchoey.nl or follow at Always Cal and Choey on Instagram to find out more. The music for the Plant Based Podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo.